the no matter the country again a fact i can't blame you for wanting to pick england as well but know what comes with it really just know what comes with it ben white has been dribbled past just eight times in 29 attempted take on. I'm not a big fan of these stats, but it's an Arsenal one, so let's push the propaganda. But opposing attackers make him just one of just two players in the Premier League to have tackled 20 plus dribblers with a 70% possess rate, success rate. Apologies. Uh, ben White has been dribbled past just eight times in 29 attempts. Crazy. So, yeah, keep pushing that propaganda. Premier League centre backs with 500 plus minutes. Slash best percentage of dribblers tackled. Saliba scores high at 91.7. But again, shout out to Akanji. But some would say stats aren't everything because that might mean that Konza is underrated, but it could also mean stats don't mean a damn thing. We need to sign into the Athletic to read this, people. So we'll be back. What's been said here? This is Newcastle. What relevance did this have to Arsenal? Oh, I think it's because Newcastle have been heavily linked with Toss out of Brighton, with Chelsea also keeping tabs. What does that have to do with Arsenal? No clue, but fair enough. Uh, Arsenal are yet to make a decision on what to do with young Brazilian Marquinhos in the upcoming January window. And we know he's probably one that probably needs to go on loan. Fabrizio Romano said, with regards to a possible loan in Jan, Arsenal have not decided on Marquinhos yet. I've, and again, if we don't bring in bodies, we can't really sanction certain loans. I think it's normal to discuss a new winger and not to consider Marquinhos ready yet as he's super young. He spent just a few months in England, so he needs to adapt, improve and then become important for the first team in the future. For sure, they're really happy with Marquinhos and his approach also in training. So keep doing what you're doing, lad. Apparently, Juventus are very keen on signing Nuno Tavares from Arsenal, says Di Marzio. Fair enough, get it done. If you're really that stupid, get it done. Saliba will be part of the... Um, France World Cup squad, which allegedly is to be announced today, folks. I'm not too sure if that's true. Apparently, there's no youth. Arsenal's have a strong squad tonight. Apparently, there's no youth players, says Team Index. I don't know if you can believe them. A string. Oh, well, let's clip that. Well, we've already seen this already, people. Eunice Musa didn't say no to a potential return. Oh, James Benj. No, I mean, he was being a pagan. I'm following me on Twitter for no reason. We're not pushing your propaganda. But obviously, he's gone from strength to strength since he went to Valencia, people, and Liverpool and the former club Arsenal, as well as many others are looking at him. Who gives a flying monkeys what pe what Brazilian pundit Neto said? No one get, cares about this Gabriel brother as well. End of the day, Martinelli's in the World Cup squad. Do something about it, fella. Nothing. You do nothing, mate. Anyways, Newcastle have been linked with Fakir. We have as well, people. It says it. Look, apparently he's been linked with a move with the likes of Tottenham and Arsenal. I don't think anybody believes that, do they, folks? I hate when people attack people of colour when they have a bad game for their country. I wouldn't play for England even. That's where I'm born. I'd play for Barbados or Jamaica. I hear that. DG, what's the Brighton gaffer saying? Has he got a CV? Deserve from what I read, he seems to be lit with... I swear he has spent a time in Russia. Seems to be lit with playing, attacking brand of football. So we'll have to see what he's on. United, Chelsea and Arsenal, and Arsenal sorry, risk you way for penalties after Premier League reach new agreement. What does this mean? I don't really care about these silly rules because the, the headline is typically too sensationalised. How United, Arsenal became the real deal in Mikel Arteta revolution. Wait, let's see what was happening here. And I think there was some sound bites coming out from this article, people. Apparently, Kronke is in London on one of his regular visits to the club and wanted to congratulate the squad. Apparently, he was in the dressing room on the 1-0 victory against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge that sent them back to the top of the Premier League. The American, who was also at Thursday's win against Zurich that secured top spot, will be thrilled with what he is seeing. Obviously, we know Mikel Arteta has had difficulties. Apparently, there are a number of factors behind Arsenal's newfound success, but the overriding, overriding feeling from those within the club is that the to togetherness among the players and staff is key. That was evident as the Gunners celebrated wildly on Sunday. Celebration police lock us up with players and staff hugging and dancing in front of a jubilant away end. But the unity was also witnessed a few weeks ago when they were held to a frustrating 1-1 draw at Southampton. In years gone by, music would sometimes go on in the dressing room after a draw, but the mood at St Mary's was one of defeat, with Granite Xhaka and Martin Odegaard sat in the corner intently discussing where the game had gone wrong, where we didn't kill it in the first half. The fact a draw felt like a defeat is an indication of the new standards Arsenal are trying to hold themselves to, and Zinchenko is a big reason for that. The Ukrainian spoke this week about changing the mindset of the club. He and fellow summer signing Gabriel Jesus are two drivers behind a shift in mentality. The two operate in different ways, though, with Zinchenko vocal in his calling out of standards and Jesus instead quietly leading by example. Jesus has established himself as one of the club's lead, 
club's leadership group and both he and Xhaka have played a key role in helping Odegaard develop as a captain. The Arsenal captaincy has somewhat has been something of a poison chalice in years gone by and it was a bold call by Arteta to hand it to a 23-year-old in the summer. I hear that. He has brought togetherness to the squad and obviously we loved the moment that was there with obviously a bit of support being flung the way of, of Pablo Marie, who unfortunately, you know, it, it was very unfortunate what happened to him over them sides, really. So, yeah, we're going to have to go on with that. The Arsenal squad wanted to show support for Marie, and before their home game against Nottingham Forest, it was decided they would hold up his, short, his shirt when they scored. Odegaard led the talks and then organised the shirt with the club. Arsenal's growth off the pitch has coincided with their development on it and improvements at the training ground have helped too. A giant new TV screen around, around five metres tall has been installed by pitches at London Coley and can be used to play video clips during sessions, which has proved particularly useful for set pieces. It has helped players understand positioning and the winner against Chelsea came from a corner as Saka's flat delivery was touched home on the line by Gabriel gassing it up a bit. Arteta has always been one for innovation, innovative new methods and is in a WhatsApp group with England rugby boss Eddie Jones and coaches from other sports such as bas basketball and American football. He's learned from, from Pep Guardiola, who used to spend a lot of time in America with the chess champion. The Arsenal manager has visited Jones at England base at Penny Hill Park, exchanging training ideas with him. Arteta has also spoken to LA Rams head coach Sean McVay about ideas. And during a trip in January to the States where he met Stan Kroenke and observed, observed how NHL ice hockey team Colorado Avalanche operate. It's always been the view of, Mikel, of Arsenal's hierarchy that Arteta... Mika Arteta was the man to lead them back to the top. The Spaniard initially had to weather some turbulent times, but he's built something that Zinchenko described this week as special. The challenge now for Arsenal is maintaining their fast start and proving they are the real deal over the course of the entire season. Can't disagree with that. I think we've seen this with Fabio Vieira people, but he has spoken. He said, this is a process. This is, of course, a process. I'm slowly integrating myself into a new country, a new culture, different weather. Everything is running smoothly. We are currently first and we're having a great season so far. We have to keep on working in the same way. Arsenal is a club I identify myself with. It is one of the biggest clubs in England and everybody knows it. There's always been world-class players who have played for Arsenal. And when I saw the project and how I'd fit into the project, it was a no-brainer to join Arsenal. He then said the two biggest influences for me are Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Ronaldo, not because he's Portuguese, a bit of it, and there's nothing wrong with that. But he is someone who really inspires others with his work ethic, how he had to leave his family and his comfort zone to sign for Sporting. And for him to build the career that he has built inspires everyone. Messi is more to do with my style of play. Careful, lad. I don't know what you're trying to say, but careful, Fabio. I am similar to Messi, careful, and I appreciate the way that he plays. I have met Ronaldo, I met him with the Portuguese national team as we would both be at the gym. And again, in our game at Manchester United, he would always provide support and give advice to young players. I mean, tell Ronaldo show you in the gym, man. Really and truly. So, yeah, away from that, though, that's that. All hail Saliba. I mean, I mean, big up William Saliba. You know, hopefully signs a new deal, but I think I was just reading that. Apparently, Arsenal held positive talks with Mudrik in the summer, according to reports, and the Gunners are still interested in signing the Ukrainian star heading into the January transfer window. Mudrik was one of the wingers linked with Arsenal in the summer. Pedro Neto was also a reported target for the North London side. Mudrik has pardon me, done his chances of a move to a top European club, no harm with his form in the Champions League this season, three goals and two assists, um, and he helped Shakhtar finish third and they'll be in the Europa League, gassing it up a bit. Apparently, Romano says Arsenal were put off by Shakhtar's asking price of £40 million and £45 million in the summer. He claims that the requested price has now risen to between £60 and £65 million quid, people. We know they Arsenal wanted a winger. Rafinha was the dream, but it was not possible to proceed. They have had very positive contracts on Mudrik on the player side, but then they decided not to proceed with Shakhtar because they wanted more than 40 to 45 million. Now Shakhtar want more than 60 to 65, but Arsenal are still following the player. They consider Mudrik smash the like button, people. They consider Mudrik a top talent, and so Arsenal are still there. But let's see, because the race is now open with many top clubs, but Arsenal will be busy in the next few weeks. Again, people, 65 million. And again, the, the, the sporting director at Shakhtar, they just want to sell to the highest bidder people. Together with Mbappe, Rafa Liao and Vinicius Jr., Mudrik is the strongest player in his role. Uh, talking about left forwards. Is 35 enough to buy him? We don't speak for these figures, not even for 45 million. We don't even call the president to make the offer. We value Mudrik more than United's Anthony, 85 million. 
floating between Arsenal and City. They are two teams that have taken an interest in the player, but there are also other clubs that can spend right away. We are not obliged to sell. We do not want to lose a phenomena. We don't want to lose. We don't want to shoot figures that aren't realistic. Don't you think you've done that? Anyways, away from that, Arsenal and Aston Villa want to sign Marcus Churam. Leave him to an Emre, man. Apparently, according to Milan News, Arsenal and Aston Villa are battling a number of European sides to sign Borussia Mönchengladbach's Marcus Churam people. I'm not really convinced on him, if I'm completely honest with you. But he's in good form. I mean, he has played 16 times in all comps this season, got 16 goals, 16 goals, contributions, 12 goals and four assists. That's a very good return for a player in a World Cup year. 25 years of age, last year of his deal, can play out wide as well as up front. I don't really I don't really rate him like that. But, I mean, we could do a lot worse. If our Arteta's talent ID says we need him, then bring it in it. But I don't really, I'm not really convinced. But you could do a lot Apparently, Henri, I mean, Wenger thinks he's like Henri. I mean, if Wenger's saying that, get it done, isn't it? Uncle, you know, and granddad Wenger is saying it, get it done. Henri had the timing of the smartest footballers. He was also very strong physically and technically he could do everything. In fact, there's a player in the Bundesliga who reminds me of him. Marcus Turam from Borussia Mönchengladbach. But all right, that's enough for me. If Wenger says that, bring him. Arsenal plotting a move to sign Leinster, but could face competition from Liverpool. Oh, yes, full circle. Seco, Seco Fufana links. Arsenal are plotting a move to sign Lens midfielder Seco Fufana, but they could face competition from Liverpool. You know, he's actually spent time in England at City before he went to Fulham and Bastia and Udinese and kept it moving. And he's found his feet at Lens. Apparently, he was dead set to go PSG in the summer. For whatever reason, that didn't bang. He could be on his way back to England with Arsenal and Newcastle interested in the midfielder who's valued at 30 million euros. Um, apparently, Liverpool are also interested in the 27-year-old. So a bit different, but bring that if you could, you know, a bit different sense of urgency. Arsenal entered the race to sign Nigerian international. We've been linked with Samuel Chukwizi for time. He's 23. We've been following him since 18 or so. Apparently, you know, according to this report, Arsenal, Aston Villa and Everton are all in the race to confirm his signature. Decent player. I'm not really convinced he takes us to the next level at all, but decent little player. I mean, for the fee, I'll take it. But why are we being linked with him? We was linked, we're linked with these guys all the time, you know. Where's the Jeremy Pino links gone, people? I would say. So we'll have to see, but I'm not against it at all, really. 23 years of age as well. Once again, Aston Villa allegedly have eyes on him as well, people. Bring Jeremy Pino. He's got a reported release clause of 55 million. Carnu, the former Arsenal man, has called him a generational talent. Fair enough. And apparently Emery wanted him when he was at Arsenal. We wanted him when he played in the Under-17s World Cup as well, people. Good player, can dribble, exciting sort of player, got a lot to work on. Definitely not trying to hear 55 million for that, but could do a lot worse. Arsenal have done a lot worse. What is this? More Mudrick stuff? Yeah, we've seen this already. It's the same comments, just a different recycled way of putting it in it. Arsenal were very close to 87 million star. Embarrassing if he joins Ars if he joins Tottenham. What does this mean? Victor Osman. He has everything, te technique, strength. He can't stay on side, can he? A great leap, speed and power. General play is not good enough. He has room for improvement. I say he plays like Jogba. They are very similar physically and technically. Now, nah, Jogba got involved in general play a lot more and was capable, in my opinion, of a good catalogue of goals. I've seen Jogba slapping a free kick. I've seen him slapping volleys. You know, never got 20 goals a season like that, but nah, I'm not too sure. Osman was followed by Arsenal. He was very close to the Gunners, but Napoli director spoke with whoever the, the, the owner and the president broke the delay so the so napoli decided to put a bid in for some in there and then i managed to buy him because they 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 paid a madness for him do you think there's a player in there but i'm not, i don't i'm not quite on the hype train as much i mean bring man you know manu kone i mean we shouldn't leave him to just west ham and liverpool this is someone that ticks the boxes for me the 21 year old can pass can tackle formally of to lose bring him bring him i mean you know bring him I'd be lying if I said we would never sell him. There has already been inquiries from Manu. The boy must want to take his next step to a club that is significantly bigger than Gladbach and will also be satisfied with the offer. Apparently, they're holding out for 39 million people. He's strong technically and has a great personality. Bring him, bring him. I don't quite agree with the Pogba stuff, but this is someone that can help us. Got to give him time to develop, but this is... Manu Kone is someone I can get behind. That is something I want. Apparently, he holds a special quality. Brad Friedel has given his verdict on Fogondo Torres, the 22-year-old who we heard over the weekend. Last weekend, Eddie was talking with his advisors along with Scout uh, Lima to see what could be done. 
He's a star over here with a really good left foot. In the final third, he holds a special quality in being able to unlock defenses. He has a very he has very good vision and a decent strike on him. Some players go to the Premier League and do incredibly well right away. And with others, it takes a little bit of time, as we all know. The physicality could be a little bit of an issue for him at first in the Premier League, but I think he could get used to it. He's a good player. I don't know him personally, so I don't know if he would go want to go to be a squad player when he's a star elsewhere. I hear that. But bring him, you know, bring them all. I came to Arsenal with the task of being one of the leaders of the team. I'm only 25. I'm one of the oldest in the squad. For that reason, I feel more confident and ready for the World Cup. Big up, Gabby Jesus, people. I'm the type of player that has certain qualities. I'm there to create chaos. Can, can we create some goals and score them too, bro? I hear that, though. I'm super happy being selected and I'm there to help in whatever position the gaffer wants me to play. But today, I feel more confident on my main position being a nine. I like that. The goals are going to come, inshallah, inshallah. Raw Saka getting beats by J. Cole Sands. Star boy. Remember watching you in the Czech or Trade Trophy and you just... Just keep getting better and better. Like, bro, big up Saka, man. And Martinelli. Demons. Look at the demons. Look at Arteta, bro. Making demons out here. I love it. Arsenal are the side to have spent the least percentage of time in a losing position in the Premier League this season. That's great. Hopefully, we still have similar graphs like this in May. You know, one has to wonder, why isn't All or Nothing Season 2 being recorded this year, you know? And Arsenal fans, we could actually watch some good-ish this year rather than Eddie and Ketty are patting in Lokonga and ultimately how it crumbled. Arsenal ranked second in defence and attack over the over the last six Premier League games, people, where our last six games haven't all necessarily been that good. That's defence, you know, we're in the top five. And attack. We're dead there as well. Spurs scoring quite bad there, isn't it? Slightly from you know, Conte relishes big games. Have Spurs taken point real points? So have Spurs taken three points in a top six game? Have they been in the front foot in a top six game apart from 20 minutes, 30 minutes against Liverpool against Liverpool last week? Conte builds his defense on foundations. Boy, I mean sh- United are rebuilding their defence. We've got a naive defence. And I mean, obviously, Spurs are ahead of a couple of them teams in the table, but boy, you know. I wish certain teams were crucified for the same things certain teams are praised for in this life. And of course, I'm going to push the agenda. Uh, Why Arsenal not on TV in the Cat Yarabao today? Not only in the UK will the game be unavailable to watch live, but it has not made the cut as one of the few third round ties which would be broadcast in foreign territories either. Sky Sports are watching City Chelsea. Obviously, Wednesday's action, apparently Man United versus Aston Villa was moved so that it can be aired live. But we're going to watch it. You know, we're still doing a watch along for that. We're still doing it. We're going to make it happen. Even if we have to watch it all of someone's dodgy iPhone, we're still going to make it happen. They can't stop us. They cannot stop us. So it is what it is. Apparently, Mikel Arteta demands focus from Arsenal stars as World Cup looms. Amen, Gaffan. Nobody cares because, you know, when Arteta is urging caution and we're winning and we're doing things, no one cares. But I like how Mikel and the players are saying we're doing well, Sekul. Let's keep manoeuvring and see where we're going. But he's urged his players heading to the World Cup to remain focused on club matters. Obviously, there's a lot of attention and a lot of media coverage. I'm sure they get asked a lot of questions. A lot of people contacting them already because it's just around the corner. It's a matter of days now. Amen. And we'll be doing watch longs across Twitch and YouTube. Make sure you're checking your schedule, Twitch gang. And you cannot stop. But obviously, we want to keep our players as focused as possible on the job they have to do for the club in the next two games, Brighton and Wolves. We need to understand, obviously, the risks and rewards that we have. But at the same time, we cannot treat any competition in a different way. We want another win because as well, playing well helps winning and helps winning. It maintains the mood. It maintains the momentum, the confidence, the trust, the involvement of everybody. And it's just beneficial in any aspect. Shout out to them. He's also bigged up Jesus and Martinelli. Jesus and Martinelli are delighted. I spoke to them both today and they have big smiles on their faces. For Martinelli, it's his first one. And I think it's a huge achievement to be part of the national team. Amen. For Gabby Jesus, it's great as well because he needed that call up after what happened in the last one. Yeah, he did struggle. And for big Gabby, our centre-back, it's a disappointment. But when you look at the squad that they have and the experience they have in that position, you have to understand that. And it's another challenge for him. He needs to be ready for the next one. He needs to improve and carry on with the good things that he's been doing. Don't watch that. The man that we're going to bring home the World Cup, you're going to pat in the Copper America soon. Don't worry. Why Arsenal pulled out of Modric transfer after positive talks? We've seen that the price tag put us up, so I'm not going to give this guy the credibility he's seeking. The scum newspaper, whoever you lot linked us with, 
Xhaka's in the World Cup squad. I can't say that's groundbreaking news. No one gives a flying monkeys what Gary Nev thinks. You know, you flipping hypocrite. Talk about migrant rights and stuff. And yeah, I'm not saying you're wrong because everybody's a hypocrite, but you're going and getting money in certain countries during the World Cup, you know. So you just you just want to be seen saying the good things rather than actually doing it. And I clocked that when you started talking about Raheem Sterling and racism, where you previously denied certain things that, that Sterling faced. I'll always hate Gary Neville as as, as a pundit because I just think he's like Piers Morgan. He just wants to be seen saying the right things. And I don't think he has an ounce of integrity, people, if I'm honest. Brighton are being taken seriously tonight. Arsenal attempted by Turan. We've mentioned Seku Fufana. Cedric is announced to start. The Premier League season for next season, 2023-24, will start on Saturday the 12th of August and run to the 19th of May 2024, people. For the first time in a number of years, the Premier League are bringing back the winter break and there'll be no league games from the 13th to the 20th of January 2024. Fair enough. And we've been linked with Chuck Weezy, as you said. Hopefully, Ben White makes the World Cup squad because with Southgate, nonsense is always possible. So we can't count chickens before they hatch, folk. As you lot know, anything to do with Arsenal here? Nope. Anything that we haven't already covered in that regard? Well, we've seen that with Marquinhos. What's this? Player recommendation sees Arsenal initiate talks over £65 million ace. I mean, I bet this just says the same things we know, and it talks about how Zinchenko gave him a, you know, is what it is. They consider Mudrick a top talent, and so Arsenal are still there. Let's see, because now the race is open with many top clubs, but Arsenal will be busy in the next few weeks. Pardon me. They had very positive contracts on Mudrick on the player's side, but then they decided not to proceed with Shakhtar because they wanted more than 40 to £45 million. Apparently, 90 Minutes said Zinchenko was getting involved. The left-back is a teammate and has reportedly sent Arsenal Chiefs a glowing reference of the wide man. So, I mean, done everything, really. It's a bit like how we Arsenal did their due diligence around Ramsdale and, and uh, Ben White. And you, Ramsdale came out and said Saka was talking to them during the Euros about patterning that. I mean, we've already seen this already with Gabriel, unfortunately. We saw this yesterday. Arsenal are ready to invest in key positions in January transfer window, people. Arsenal are prepared to invest where necessary in the January transfer window in order to aid their bid for a top four finish and potential title charge. Sources have told 90, million, 90 minutes. So hopefully that makes sense. Apparently we had scouts watching Goldie Gakpo. I mean, we've got, we probably had scouts watching him all season like everyone and we got to see him up close and personal over 180 minutes of football in our group home and away, really. So... Not quite sure of that. Mudrick is another option Arsenal have followed closely and they may hold an advantage in their pursuit given their openness to do a deal in January. Obviously, once again, Zinchenko has given a glowing reference of his fellow countrymen. So hopefully there's a thing there. I mean, you scored 29 goals, but forget you, man. What has Martinelli done in European football? We ask. Okay. What's this guy done in European football? All he's done is be a football manager, a football manager lit guy. Cry more, Neto. Cry more because he's going. He's going. Furthermore, Saki, I'm for all of that nonsense. But anyways, pardon me. You go against one, you go against all of us. Arsenal have been told they should spend £20 million to sign Yuri Telemans from Leicester in January before his contract expires. I mean, if we didn't want to pay £25 million in the summer, we're not going to knock off £5 million and get it done. Maybe fifteen can get it can get it going. But maybe Leicester at that stage now where he's going to leave, we're getting our season somewhat back on track. He might be worth us staying in the league, really, and keeping us in the Premier League. But apparently they're looking for 30 million. Apparently Dean Jones thinks Arsenal should look to sign Telemans. I've got a massive admiration for Telemans, the way that he's raised his game in difficult moments for Leicester and has come full circle, really. Over the summer, it didn't look like he'd be staying. He had to weigh it out. Leicester got off to a terrible start. He wasn't necessarily in form and was struggling to bring the team around. Him and James Madison have totally turned things around and did because they're both probably playing for moves. And I think it shows even more why a club like Arsenal should be looking to sign Telemans. OK, so again, nothing of tangible. I mean, we've already seen this with Fabio Vieira. Arsenal back in the hunt for Danilo as Arteta looks to beef up midfield options. We've heard this already as well, people, how we're poised to get things done. According, as, as you know, a 22 million bid didn't work in the summer, but according to reports, a fresh bid of 26 million is likely to do the trick. So hopefully there's some success where he's concerned. What's this?